Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland and this short video, another video in our series of videos uh, dealing with group frequency distributions uh, is going to concentrate on how we can actually estimate, numerically estimate, uh, the sample kurtosis or the kurtosis uh, associated with a grouped frequency distribution. Don't forget, kurtosis uh, is, is, I suppose, the fourth moment with respect to a probability uh, probability distribution. Uh, it represents how peaked the particular distribution is, uh, a leptokurtotic distribution being very peaked relative to a normal distribution, uh, and a platykurtotic distribution being relatively flat with respect to a normal distribution. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to be able to, we'd like to, be able to estimate numerically from a group frequency distribution what its kurtosis is this? How flat or how peaked is it? And we have a formula that allows us to do that. The formula that I'm going to put down here is a formula that we usually use when we're dealing with raw data. We're going to make a slight modification to that. Uh, so the formula looks something like this. It's K, which represents the kurtosis, uh, is equal to the sample size times the sample size plus 1 divided by the sample size minus 1 times the sample size minus 2 times the sample size minus 3. It's this particular factor. Okay, this factor here is got to do with the its compensation for the sizes of our samples. Uh, and that's to be multiplied by the sum of the sum of the observations minus the sample mean raised to the power of four, all divided by the standard deviation raised to the power of four. Okay, so it's that factor. And actually what we have to do as well is when we're normalizing, we take away three times the sample size minus one squared divided by divided by the sample size minus one sorry the sample size minus two times the sample size minus three okay it looks quite complicated this formula but it's actually quite straightforward to use uh, all we need is 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 three or four parameters okay uh, we need to know the sample size so once we have the sample size in our case our sample size is the size 50 so it's going to be 50 times 51 divided by 50 minus 1 which is 49 times 48 times 47 so this is just a number here let's let's keep that in mind and also this factor here or this particular term here is just a number it's a sample size minus 1 squared divided by the sample size minus 2 times the sample size minus 3 okay so this is just a number as well so this factor is a number and this is a number all based off the sample size so there's nothing complicated there but what we need to really calculate is we really need to calculate this particular term here or this particular factor okay and um, to calculate this factor we need to know s the standard deviation of our distribution uh, and we need to know x bar the mean once we know x bar we take x bar away from each observation we get the distance that each observation is away from x bar and then we raise that to the power of four okay so to do this particular calculation over here uh, if I was to apply this I suppose let's say this is for raw data in the frequency distribution case the formula looks something like this so our frequency our frequency distribution case we just have to put our frequencies in okay so we have to put our frequencies in instead of taking the mean away from an observation we're going to be taking the mean away from an observation that occurs f times so the formula actually looks something like this it's k is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by well, times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 and this particular factor needs to be multiplied by the sum of this time we know that x minus x bar to the power of 4 is going to occur f times so it's the frequencies times the x's minus the x bar to the power of 4 divided by the standard deviation raised to the power of 4 and then we need to take away this term minus 3 times n minus 1 squared divided by n minus 2 times n minus 3 okay so to calculate it where I suppose what we're really gonna have to do is we're gonna have to first of all here's my here's my frequency distribution uh, I'm le I'm just uh, assuming that this particular distribution represents uh, I suppose uh, answers to a question and the question was asked to 50 people and the question was how much money did you spend over the weekend with responses falling into one of these six categories and what we can actually see is five people responded with a value between 20 and 35 euros, 15 people with a value between 50 and 65, and four people with a value between 80 and 95. So we don't actually have the actual observations. We don't have the 50 individual observations. So we can't apply this particular formula here, okay, this particular formula, 
okay because this formula is based off raw data so we'll apply this formula here which has a slight modification that takes the frequencies into consideration so what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate I'm going to estimate what each particular what each particular let's say uh, midpoint what the midpoints of the classes are okay and they're going to represent what each of these quantums or magnitudes of frequencies represent okay so for example I'm going to choose the midpoint what's halfway between 20 and 25 is 27.5 what's halfway between 25 and 50 is 42.5 and I continue in this fashion adding on the width of the classes which is 15 so that gives me 57.5 the next one is going to give me 72.5 the next one is going to give me 87.5 the next one is going to give me 102.5 okay so once I know them x's I suppose I could calculate f of x and actually calculate the mean yeah so we know that the mean that the mean x bar is simply equal to the sum of the frequencies times the observations divided by the sum of the frequencies but I've actually already calculated this for this particular distribution and actually when we were looking at when we were calculating our sample skewness you've seen the calculation of the mean for this distribution and the mean actually works out to be approximately 51.3 so now I know the mean what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate what x minus x bar is so I'm going to calculate what x minus x bar is and uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually well we're going to need the, the standard deviation so what I'm going to do is I'm going to square these values, x minus x bar squared. I'm going to multiply them by the frequency, which is f times x minus x bar squared. Because we know that the standard deviation s is equal to the sum of the frequencies times the x's minus the x bar squared divided by the sample size minus 1. This is a sample standard deviation. It's a square root of that. So I need to know what f times x minus x bar squared is. And once I know that, okay once I know that I have my my s but I'll also have my f times my x minus x bars squared okay so actually if I multiply this term by this term here okay I end up with f times x minus x bar squared times x minus x bar squared which actually gives me f times x minus x bar raised to the power of 4 okay so actually this calculation here now will give us everything that we need for this particular formula so let's do that calculation Okay. So let's take our mean value, which is 51.3, and let's take that away from each one of our, I suppose, our, let's say, our 